And hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm here today with another brand new GIMP tutorial. In today's tutorial, we'll be teaching you how to use the light and shadow filter. And just be aware, I'm not going to be going over drop shadow because I have a whole separate tutorial on drop shadows. So if you want to learn about drop shadows independently, um, I'm not going to be going over it in this tutorial. I have a, I have another video made for drop shadows. So if you want to see that one, there will be a link in the, in the description for drop shadows. So you may click that and watch that video. Today we will be going over though the gradient flare, lens flare, lighting effects, sparkle we're going to touch on. I don't use it that much. It's not that great of a filter, but we'll touch on it. Supernova and the Zach effect. I believe that's how it's pronounced. If it's not pronounced that way, I apologize. So may possibly post it in the comments anyway so let's go ahead and get started let's just get a uh, 1000 by 700 seems good and it's gonna let's use a um, black gradient well black background not gradient black background and let's go ahead and start with some of the filters light and shadow let's start with gradient flare now basically what a gradient flare is it's basically just type of optical flare. These are really nice designs that GIMP generates for you. In settings, you can set your X and Y location. Basically, changing these will just uh, change the location of it. And obviously, this stuff will change the way it looks. So, change the color of it. So, you can play around with that. It really depends on how you want it to look. Uh, if you, it, it, We have several um, flares here several options now if you want to make your own you can always click new and you can type in flare one two three and you can actually edit it and there are several ways you can do this actually there are several types of flares here now obviously I'm just clicking random stuff so it won't look awesome but if you want to go through some of these flares here they actually do look really nice you can actually create some really nice ones and game gives you the option to completely customize your entire flare so I know this looks stupid but you can basically make your own flare to make it look something like these now obviously it will take some time but if you just want you can even edit some of these like say you don't like this you can just click edit and you can actually edit every part of this flare for example I could change the color of this I could change all the settings for this flare if I wanted to or you can just create new ones so that's how what a flare that's how to get flares I'm just gonna make one so you can see how it is what I suggest you do is I suggest you make a new layer before you put a flare because if you want to move your flare around you can't do it so what I suggest you do is that you always create a new layer click a new layer and then you can click light shadow gradient flare you click one and then you can actually move it around and you don't have to worry about your X and Y positions either so that's the gradient flare next we're gonna go over the lens flare now the lens flare is something very different from the gradient flare the lens flare is basically just a basic it's a basic flare actually just even if you look at the description here gradient flare it says produces a lens flare effect using gradients and lens flare is just one flare without any gradients so basically gradient flare is a more advanced version of lens flare so lens flare is not, nothing special basically just a, an average regular flare that you can um, change the color of using your colors command here so it's nothing really special but for the heck of this tutorial I'll just put one now as I said you might want to you well you should use new layers so you can move it around because as you can see now I can't move it around so that's the lens flare much like the uh, gradient flare I never use lens flare I always use gradient flare next we have lighting effects now lighting effects this is something really cool actually that I like to use at times now basically what this will do it will let you use 
um, different types of lightings here to get a lighting effect and you can play around with this all you want you can change the intensities change the way the light comes in to a point to just a uh, directional so it's plenty for you to do here um, the same with this you can change basically every aspect of the light here and you can change the intensity of it the distance of it um, very simple to use now like I said I would make a new layer again so that way I can move my light around so let's just see how this looks now something like that obviously doesn't look that great because I didn't really put any effort into it but I would make another layer and then you can actually uh, move your light around and there you go I don't use I don't use uh, the uh, lighting effects very much because I'm into flares but if you like lighting effects you can play around with that now sparkles and this is something that's kind of annoying it can be helpful though now you can't just you know play around settings and expect it to work because it's not going to work you're going to see that you're not going to get anything here when it finishes it's not going to work what you need to do is you need to get your pencil tool or get your brush tool and you need to get um, the color of your sparkle and you can just put random dots everywhere or wherever you want your sparkles then you go to filters light and shadow sparkles and you can you can play all these settings the way you want it tells you what each of them does click OK this probably will come out really bad but you'll see what happens basically you turn them into sparkles now obviously I oversized them so if you make them small um, it'll probably look better but like I said this is not really a good uh, this is not probably one of the best effects because if I wanted to I can just go to my brushes here and um, find the sparkle one here because or you can just download a sparkle so you can just um, use your brush tool to make sparkles you don't need to use the sparkle a filter here but like I said um, some people like to use this I prefer to use my brushes next one is gonna be the um, supernova I believe supernova I'm just gonna keep these sparkles here because they're not gonna interfere anyway now basically what the supernova does I actually like this it's a really nice effect uh, much like the flares but a little more specific you can basically make a huge supernova explosion here by playing around with these settings here obviously and you can change the colors of it uh, to any color you want really and you can click OK and then it'll create a supernova explosion for you now like I said you wanna always make a new layer before you do the stuff so you can move it around so that's that let me undo all this next we're gonna go over light and shadow we're gonna go to drop shadow I already did for someone perspective now perspective this is not a, a really amazing tool either um because this tool is just like uh the perspective tool that's right here now this perspective tool is just gonna like change the way your text looks so you can just transform your text and the filters light and shadow perspective tool does the exact same thing um, it just changes the angle and if you see what this does it basically just does the exact same thing that the perspective tool does only that you can add color onto it and it's more basic now if you now if you if you if you if you want to have you know a specific type of uh, perspective then I would use that but if you want to have some freedom and make your own type of perspective which is without what I would do I would just use this perspective tool and make it my own now if you don't know how to use this tool very well 
then yes, I would suggest you use the filters one perspective. But if you know how to use, if you know how to play around with the perspective tool that's right here, then I would use this one. That's why I don't use that filter very much because I know how to use the perspective tool pretty well. And you can change the color of the of the text with your um uh, color uh, menu here. So next we're gonna need, the last one's gonna be uh, this effect I can't pronounce. Xat Xat effect maybe is that how it says it. But anyway, um, what this effect does, I actually like this effect a lot because this effect gives it makes your layer a 3D. It puts it a 3D effect. Now, if you have text or even an object or you have any type of layer and you click filters and you click light and shadow and you click this effect basically what you can do is you can play around these settings as usual and if you click OK it gives it a sort of 3D look and if we zoom in now basically all this is it's basically using um, different color schemes and just duplicating the layer and um, moving it to a different side so you can do this manually you can basically do this without even using this tool but like I said if you don't know how to do some things on on GIMP you might want to use these filters because I can do this I can do this exact same thing if I um, click duplicate layer and if I move this layer say to the let me get rid of this I move this layer to left a little bit and change the color of it no no wait I have to use this thing right here the bucket tool oh I didn't need to do that but whatever and then I can just put this all back and as you can see I can do the exact same thing now obviously they add more effects so if you if you want to go basic and you don't know much about GIMP then you can use the this effect right here and it'll basically you can play on these op options and it will make some cool looking 3D effects for you because it will give you some drop shadows as well so um, in review this effect basically incorporates the um, drop shadow effect and um, the moving around of texts and creation of texts uh, so that's basically it that's basically a 3D tool but those are all the effects that we have for the filters so that's all I'm gonna go over as I said for drop shadow I have a whole separate tutorial for that so you may view that in the description thank you all for watching this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.